Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Guitar Gear One. Uh, this is going to be a review of the Warpig El Nico uh, seven string pickups. But the thing is, when you start talking about sounds, I think people can start to get confused with how they're going to get a certain tone. Uh, if you look at a guitar player that maybe plays EMG 81 pickups, um, if you put those into a guitar, your guitar isn't just going to sound like a Metallica record. You're not going to sound like Alexi Lyo. If you buy um, a Gibson Lucille model, you are not going to sound like BB King. You just aren't. There are so many factors that actually go into your tone that um, it, there's, there's so many different things coming together. If you don't take all those things into account, you might end up spending a lot of money, getting frustrated, and, uh, and never really getting what you want. So uh, in this episode, we're going to talk about the pickups. We're going to show you the pickups. We're going to show you all the sounds of the pickups. But we're also going to talk about where those sounds are actually coming from. So first of all, we're going to give you a nice good look at the guitar, show you the pickups, uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, what we're doing and why and how we're getting those sounds. So stick around and uh, see what it's all about. Okay, guys, so this is what the pickups actually look like up close. And uh, there's nothing too special about looking at them from the front. Uh, these are the regular open coil black bobbin um, pickups with hex screws. Um, and just so you know this, when you start shopping for these, if you, if you decide to do that, they are available with some really, really, really cool covers. Uh, I highly suggest you look into those. And if you're like me and you, and, you, and you happen to find a good deal on a set of black open coil ones, if you would like to, you can ship these to bare knuckle and they will put a set of um, any cover that you like on them for you. They have to install them, they wax pot them and do some other things to make sure that they're still able to stay under warranty. It's not cheap, you have to ship them to the UK. I think the whole thing ends up costing like $120 or $150 to get those covers on, but if that's something you just gotta have, that's an option for you. So. Anyway, I just wanted to let you get a closer look at the pickups themselves, and uh, now we're going to do some playing and uh, talk about them a little bit more. Bare knuckles, bare knuckles, bare knuckles. Why is everyone talking about bare knuckles? Well, there's really nothing else like them, uh, for right now anyway. And um, as far as the raw amount of output that you get, I don't know of anything else like these. Uh, to give you an idea, and I talked about this in the, in the review of this guitar that I just did, and if you haven't checked that out, you might want to go ahead and do that, but uh, the, not all their pickups are set up to be this high gain, okay? Uh, they make some actually very, very good PAF style, vintage style, rock style uh, kind of pickups. And even something like the Aftermath, which is something you might have read about, you might have heard about, Misha Mansour from Periphery, I think, has really, really, really turned people onto those in a big way. Uh, those, those aren't nearly as hot as these pickups are, and there's reasons for that, and there's reasons that that is um, desirable. Okay, If you look into that, the way that uh, tones are actually constructed in a studio, you might be surprised. Uh, I read an interview with Alexi Lyle from Children of Bodom, and he was talking about if you listen to the actual guitar tones on the Are You Dead Yet record, uh, they're not actually that high gain. They're not actually turning the gain up that high in their amplifiers because if you do, you start to kind of lose note separation and articulation. Um, so by keeping things with, with a lower amount of gain, you're actually producing more clarity, even though you still get that, that punchy oomph kind of a feeling. And the reason I'm talking about all this just during a review of these pickups is, if you're thinking about spending $400 on a set of these pickups, and I'm telling you, by the time you're done, if you buy them brand new, you're going to be getting pretty close to that. Uh, so if you think you're going to buy these pickups and you're going to sound like Misha, we're going to talk about what all would have to go into that to make that happen. So, um, to further emphasize that point, I want to talk to you about some of the components that go into what you're actually hearing as a composite when someone is playing the guitar for you. Okay, first of all, there are several different kinds of guitar bridges. Okay, and you've seen guitars that have string through bridges where, they, where the strings actually come through the body of the guitar. You have wraparound tail pieces like on a Les Paul. Uh, the older style Les Pauls, like the juniors, things like that. You have the tunematic style Les Pauls, 
and I apologize if you don't know what this means. You can Google these things, you can take a look at them. This is what's called a double locking tremolo system. Okay, this is, this is a licensed Floyd Rose. This one in particular sucks. And I think I mentioned that before too. This tremolo robs me of so much tone and I know that, I know it. Um, if you were making a tremolo out of very dense, poorly machined parts, you are going to lose resonance from the strings and the wood of the guitar to those bad components. So I know that if I put a better tremolo system on this guitar, it would sound infinitely better. And you can go all down the line. That includes almost every part of the trem that actually comes into contact with string vibration. Anything in a guitar that vibrates is going to influence the sound to some extent. Be aware of that. That includes your fingers, okay, that includes the way that you pick. Uh, it includes the gain structure of your amp. Uh, it includes how hard your speakers are being pushed inside of the cabinet, whether it's an open back cabinet, um, like a combo amp is. We can do videos on all this stuff if you guys have more interest. But there are so many factors that when added all up together, are what actually give a particular guitar player their sound. And the last thing I'm gonna tell you is <coughs> that everything that I just said only affects a live sound. Don't forget that. When a guitar player goes into a studio, you have a room that is controlled and is set up to create a certain kind of sound. Depending on how far away a microphone is from a cabinet, where it's placed at the cabinet, what angle is pointed at the cabinet, what the room is made out of, how big it is, how small it is, how the baffling is inside the room controlling the sound, how hard the amp is being cranked, how hard the speakers are being pushed, what kind of microphones they're using, and then here's the real mind bender. <coughs> Lots of very famous guitar sounds were got out of very small amplifiers. And what you can do is you can go into a studio and you can take a very simple guitar line and you crank the bass response on that track up very, very high. Then you go back through and play the exact same thing with a very, very, very treble dominant guitar track. Go over it again with a very mid-range heavy guitar, uh, guitar tone. You stack all three of them together and you now have a guitar sound that is impossible to have live. So you can create these sounds on a record. Like if you were like, are just so hung up on the sound of a particular record from a particular artist and you're like, God, I want to have that sound. You're going to be chasing the dragon's tail probably forever. And that's what so many people end up doing. And the thing is, they never find their own sound, which is really kind of the, the, the loss of the whole thing. So now that we've talked in a comprehensive way and an overview of where guitar tones come from, I'm going to show you what happens when you plug in a set of war takes and go to town with an angle powerball in your knee because that's the only way you're going to get this sound uh, but it'll give you a very good idea of what the components can do and you can get an idea of what you can do with them so let's go ahead and do some of that and uh, I won't waste any more of your time okay guys so here we are plugged into the angle and again if, if you didn't catch the last review this is a 100 watt head going into a 212 cabinet that is loaded with two Celestian Vintage 30 speakers. Um, this is a very cool cabinet, by the way. Uh, each of the speakers is built into its own completely separate uh, compartment. There's, there's actually a divider between the two speakers and they're, they're independently housed in this Baltic birch cabinet. What your cabinet is made out of, what kind of speakers you have, all that stuff's a factor. The difference between using a 100 watt head, if you're playing tube, and uh, playing like a 50 watt head or even smaller, like a 7 watt, 5 watt, there's lots of really cool low wattage amps. The higher the wattage is, you get more and more and more headroom. Okay, you're going to see that term headroom. And what that means is you can push the amp volume wise much farther and maintain a clarity before the amp starts to break up on you. Okay, so if I turn this amp up really loud, and I keep the game low, it's still gonna stay nice and clean and clear, and, uh, and that's what we call a headroom, okay? So, um, we're gonna just go through and audition these pickups a little bit. 
Okay, and, and the reason that I like the War Pigs so much is that although they are incredibly high output, and I can't stress that enough, and again, I don't know of a higher output, a higher output pickup on the market, uh, they're still so usable for anything. I mean, I would be comfortable playing these anywhere. And to be honest, the only thing that's really holding me back with this setup is this Floyd Rose. To me, you can hear it from a mile away when a guitar has a Floyd Rose versus like a tunematic bridge setup like a Les Paul does. To me, that, that, that is one of the most immediately identifiable factors between the tone and feel of those guitars. But that's just me. So, uh, <coughs> I have no idea what I'm going to play. I haven't thought about it at all. So I'm just going to start showing you some stuff. And we're going to start off on the, um, the neck pickup of the guitar. And, uh, and just work our way around. We're going to play all different kinds of stuff. So get comfy. <laughs> So, a couple 
things there. First of all, you have a Nico pickup still, right? Which is what most of your blues guys are gonna be playing with. Um, so you, you, you can still use these for so many different styles of music and they get so fucking mean when you want them to. You can push them, it's all there. To me, they're so versatile. And again, for this kind of money, they better be, right? But they kind of are. So I'm gonna go ahead and split the coils. And, if, and, and again, guys, if you're, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna invest in pickups like this, you better be getting everything out of them because, yeah, they're, they're, they're as much money as, uh, as, a, as a relatively inexpensive guitar itself is, right? So, um, what do I mean by coil splitting? Do you guys know about this yet? Okay, a humbucking pickup is two separate coils that are actually bound together to cancel out the hum that comes through single coil pickups. Let me show you what I'm talking about right now. Let's see if we can hear it. So, I'm going to take this, this dual coil pickup, right? There's two coils here, if you don't know this. When I flip this five-way switch, and you can also get what's called a push-pull potentiometer. And what that means is I could pull up on this tone pot, or you could use the volume pot, it's totally up to you. And when you pull on it, there's a switch inside that goes and the coil splits. Okay, that's a really cool switching system too if you have like a three-way switch uh, instead of a five-way. Because this is already set up to be a five-way, this is really easy to do. So, when I click this switch down, I'm going to take this neck pickup and I'm actually going to split the coil and only utilize one coil and get a totally different sound. It's going to be a single coil kind of a sound. So, it sounds like this. Mojo, you know, they talk about the mojo of a guitar. 
Sorry, man. Yes, there are unique instruments, there are unique properties that happen, but so darn much of it is you. And they always talk about if, if, if a guy and will pick on him, just because to me it's such an easy one, if B.B. King picked up your guitar, he would still sound very much like B.B. King, no matter what he's playing on, because so much of that is in your finger tone. So I apologize, guys, that uh, video cut somewhere, and, and I don't know where, and i got to keep rolling. So anyway, we're going to do some stuff with the, with the bridge pickup on clean. We're not going to spend too much time there, because neither are you probably. We're going to get out of the high gain stuff, which is maybe why you're here in the first place. So, uh, real quick, here's some stuff clean on the bridge pickup El Nico War Pigs. <laughs> So we got this like...
so much because I want you to be able to say, oh, that's how the pinch harmonic sounded, oh, that's how full chord sounded, that's how that tappy stuff sounds, that's how whatever. So I'm not trying to just noodle here. I actually want you to, uh, I want to cover as much ground as I can. So anyway, if you guys think this is gratuitous, go ahead and fast forward a little bit. But for those that are uh, trying to find their particular style, we're going to just kind of, kind of keep moving through some stuff. <laughs>
these pickups, I think, are maybe some of the most versatile on the market, period. If you're looking, if you're looking to have a seven string guitar that you can do anything with, you can go to a blues gig, you can go to a jazz gig, you can go play your gent show, you can go play thrash metal, you can play anything, neoclassical guitar. You can do absolutely anything with these guitars, including break the bank, because I know we're all trying to do that, especially now. So, if you guys have any more questions at all, please send them in, because that's the only way I know you exist, because otherwise it's just me and Stella the dog in the basement. So, anyway, thanks for tuning in to Guitar Gear 1. I hope you really like these pickups, and I hope you really have a great day. Thanks, guys.